I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I'm going to be helping you guys look up how best to get flights here to Nicaragua. A lot of people have asked me over the years, how is it best to get there? Where should I be finding these low prices that everyone's talking about? And they often go online and come up with processes that lead them to high cost flights. And they're frustrated because they don't know what we're doing to find good quality flights into Nicaragua. So we're going to head into my studio, sit at my desk and actually bring up a web page and go through and show you where I'm finding and what it looks like when I'm finding good priced flights, because there really are excellent flights coming into Nicaragua, but if you don't follow the right process, it is very easy to end up with flights that are much more expensive than they need to be, often on airlines that don't even treat you as well as the good ones. Anyway, so we're going to show you some of the ones that I recommend based on coming from the US, but this will work as a theory for anywhere right after that bump. Okay, before we jump directly into the topic, I'm going to try to have a, a chapter marking down there that takes you directly to going on the website and, and looking up the prices. But I want to talk about two things real quickly. One is because my business partner and roommate, Paul, did not listen to me, he flew down here on United just two days ago. First of all, his first flight was canceled, but that was no one's fault. That was because of a hurricane. But because it was canceled, they rerouted him through another airlines. In doing so, they completely lost his luggage. They put it into luggage limbo where they didn't send it with him and they held on to it. But because it's an international flight, that's illegal. Now his luggage is stuck in the United States and the airline that actually brought him here to Nicaragua has no legal ability to do anything. They don't have the luggage. They've never had the luggage or unaware of the luggage, so they can't help. And the airline that he flew, United, held on to it and has kept it and has no legal means of sending it on to the United States. And they have no functional English or Spanish speaking uh, customer service center. You have to call a third party that doesn't speak English or anything clearly, unable to explain anything to them. They don't understand the flight schedules. They don't understand the handoff. They don't know what luggage is. They don't know where Nicaragua is. They have, there's no way to communicate with them. The online automated systems that uh, United has um, doesn't accept the codes. They make you uh, scan in codes that don't exist in this situation so they have no actual like working process for even communicating to them that something has gone wrong and and this is really important for people flying to Nicaragua one we just say never fly United why would you do that we all know it is the worst airlines coming to the region it's also the most expensive just avoid them and save yourselves these problems yes we have complaints about the other airlines and none of them are like United so United does not staff the desk at Managua. So even though he arrived there, he had no one to go talk to. He arrived and they're like, oh, we don't have your luggage. You have to go talk to the desk. You go to the desk and they're like, there is no United desk. What are you talking about? There's no people here, right? Maybe if you come back a different day, maybe they're there for a brief window. Maybe that's it. But when he arrived, they had no desk. So the entire concept of reporting to a person doesn't exist when flying into Nicaragua. Sure, if you're flying around the US, you may have more recourse. You may have more legal recourse. When you're flying internationally, you can't be taking chances with doing things like flying on United, having multiple airlines. Just avoid that stuff. Stick with the airlines we know that work. Even if you're like, well, it's not fancy enough for me, even if it doesn't take the flight path that you want. Seriously, you don't want to be doing international travel where your airlines is potentially a problem to a degree where you can't reach customer service. They have no one to help you and they're able to simply cut you off because you're in another country. They have no obligation to actually help you because you don't have, you know, the international laws really don't do much to protect a traveler on an airline. So you need to be able to trust the airline. So think about that when traveling in general. All right, second thing is I recently learned about the concept of relocation retreats. I'd never heard of this before, and I just heard about it uh, a week ago. I was talking to Eric Peterson from Generic Expats, and we were looking at some stuff from Nomad Capitalist, and I had no idea they were charging up to $25,000 a ticket. Now, that's for VIP seats. What it was a VIP seat in a relocation conference? Like, this stuff's insane. And you go to these conferences where apparently people who may or may not know anything much about relocation. This is a weird topic because yeah, some of us have relocated and live abroad, but my amount of knowledge of living in Nicaragua doesn't necessarily give me any useful knowledge for you to move to Tanzania, for example. You kind of need to have specialty information about any given country. Now, of course, you could assemble a company where you have people who've been to every country and people who've done a bunch of surveys of country and you put together layers of information. You'd have to have a giant company with immense research and really have like tight process. Like it would be really, really hard to do this stuff. I've traveled 
killed and relocated more than the average bear, and even I have pretty limited resources, and you can see I got things wrong just the other day, right? Well, I got them wrong quite a bit and realized that just the other day, but the idea that you would pay to go to a retreat where they're going to simply sell you on the idea of relocation, you're basically guaranteeing what the outcome is going to be. I'm willing to spend a whole bunch of money to pay other people who only make additional money if they sell me on the thing I've already decided to spend money on. Now, most people aren't spending $25,000. let us say you're spending $2,500. You spend $2,500 and you give it to a person whose job then is to convince you to do the thing. Well, just do the thing. Save yourself the money and the time. Move forward. And I understand they may give some handy advice at these things, but is that advice not available for free online? Of course it is. All good advice is free online. Go look it up. You don't pay for good advice. You may need to pay someone to assemble good advice for you, but that's there only if they're not salespeople. If they then have any vendors, anything like that. So I come from a business background, right? I work from the IT perspective. And one of the first things we say is if you're talking to the vendor salesperson, you've already failed. Right? You have to have a department that separates you from those people so you never get the sales pitch directly because they're designed to emotionally manipulate you. That's what sales does. That's its job. It's to make you want something you wouldn't want on its own. If you would want the thing without them selling you on it, they wouldn't pay a salesperson to convince you. You'd convince yourself. So don't be setting yourself up for failure by paying to go to a place where they're going to assemble salespeople and those salespeople are going to try to sell you on where to buy a car, where to buy residency, how to get your passport, what lawyer to use, what taxi driver to use, what place to stay in, where you're going to want to buy a house and potentially lead you astray as we see constantly from things like this, trying to convince you you got to do paperwork before you get to a country, trying to get you to make rash decisions, putting false urgency on you, coming up with prices that may, may make sense with where you're coming from but don't make sense with where you're going to and you don't know because you haven't gotten there yet. It's all about catching you before you do your due diligence and making it difficult to believe your due diligence when you do do it. Don't set your up for those, yourself up for those kinds of things. These things sound absolutely bonkers crazy. Now, I've never been to one, but I can't imagine how someone could provide valuable resources. And as I said before, it is extremely rare that you're ever going to find a person who's involved with these kinds of things who's a competent relocation person themselves. In most cases, it's just a random person who's trying to make a quick buck because they're struggling financially in the place that they ended up. And since they did a thing that you don't know they're not good at yet, they have an opportunity to catch you and get your money before you find out that they don't know anything you don't know, right? Or they have very, very, obviously they're in a place normally, so they may have a little bit of knowledge, but you don't realize that they're not an expert and that the good information is out there in other ways. Or often you're asking questions that don't make sense, so they're looking for those questions so that they can jump in and answer things that you shouldn't be asking because that's an opportunity to grab you and mislead you and use that information to manipulate you into buying more and more things from them. It's a good way to get people. So so as just a general thing, one, I'm just totally shocked that these exist and two, don't be sucked into this kinds of stuff. Look for people who are making money by giving you advice to sell you more things. That's that's a con, right? That's the advice con, pretending that it's advice when it's actually a sales pitch. So be super, super careful of that. All right, let's head into the studio. Let's bring up a website and let's go actually search for some uh, airline tickets in real time so you can see what that should look like. All right, guys, we're inside now. We're sitting at my laptop and we're going to jump right into showing you um, how we can look for uh, different destinations. So let's just do this. OK, so we're going to start by selecting our origin city. Let's just start in Miami. And in normally this lets us either pick an airport. This is Avianca that we're starting with. And then we're going to be going to Managua. This is the only airport that you need to deal with if you're coming to Nicaragua. There aren't alternative airports unless you're flying to a different country and then bringing a bus or taxi in, okay? So that's just starting. Now, when this comes up, it's gonna show you which days are high cost and which ones are low cost and which ones are normal. And that helps you make some quick decisions, right? A little bit of planning and you're gonna save a lot of money. Now, not everyone has that flexibility, so I understand. But if you're looking for those really good prices, this is just a tool to help you do that. So we're looking right now, I'm recording this on July 10th, so we can't really book for today. Most of the flights are already in motion. Uh, so let's look ahead to September. Generally, that's about how far out. And notice, like, September starts getting really good. October starts getting fantastic, according to whatever their guide is here. So let's just take the 18th, because this seems like, you know, we're looking at coming in about two months. That's a good amount of time to plan. If you're last second, yeah, you're going to pay more. But a little bit of planning. We're going to look on the 18th. Let's see what they got. 
for us. So yeah, we're just gonna say one adult. And of course, there's gonna be like, you wanna fly with a whole bunch of bags, you wanna bring dogs, you wanna, you know, there's gonna be extra cost, but this gives you kind of a baseline starting point of what things are going to be, right? And then you can look at different uh, airlines and see what different fees are going to be. But so Avianca, right? This just came up fantastic, $67 from Miami to, and then at the top, notice this, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it shows us all the different days. Now it's 67, that only shows the lowest price. Every major airlines does more or less the same thing. You can see that it's all low prices during that time. What if we wanted to come a week earlier? Do you remember? It showed some yellow in there, so it's a little bit higher cost. Let's go see what that higher cost tier is. Um, actually, it doesn't show up on this earlier week. It's still 67 all week. Let's go to the week before. Still all 67. Okay, there's gotta be some time. No, it's still showing us the same week. It is there we go there we go we got a week earlier but that's still all 67. we're gonna try to push this to see if we can find it makes you do it twice that's a little bit weird i'm not seeing any higher prices it's also not letting me go any further back so the system isn't perfect as far as the website goes but it does give you a basic idea that we have huge swaths of time this is 67 dollars for multiple flights in the day now there oh, oh let's show more flights i saw it pop up there one flight, $825, others are 67. Now, notice they have different operators. They're gonna have different features, I guarantee. So obviously, if you're not looking around carefully, it's really easy to say, I only wanna fly at 720 at night. It's $800, it's so expensive. But if you look at what the options around it are, is, oh, if I was to fly less than two hours earlier, then I could fly for just $67. So it's completely different prices, completely different cost. A little bit of looking around is gonna make all the difference. Now this is Miami. Let's hop back and do this all again uh, and see what it's gonna be coming from a completely different city, right? Now often you don't wanna allow your locations when doing searches. You wanna do searches on a Tuesday when possible. Um, you wanna do them at least several weeks in advance, if not a month or two. Uh, you wanna, you know, not give them any information like cookies or anything. You wanna do it on a, on a, on a, um, a private session, maybe from a different IP address in your house. There's a lot of tricks uh, to getting better prices on um, airline websites because once they know you're looking at flights, they tend to raise the prices as you start hunting around um, if they detect that that's what you're doing. Now you can do round trip, but I generally do one way. So let's see about Los Angeles. There we go, LAX, popular place to come from. We're gonna be heading to Managua again. And no, they're not showing any dates. This may be because they don't do this flight path. We may have to pick a different city. Let's take a look. It's thinking, the lawyer plane's flying. All right, there we go. Now, coming all the way from Los Angeles, we're looking at over $200 for most of these flights. This is the same time period, maybe one week different than we looked at before. Here we got one day, it's just a few dollars cheaper, 219. Now, 219 is not a high cost flight, right? It's still a really good deal. Uh, especially if you're coming from Los Angeles. So for those who aren't aware, you're gonna be flying through uh, through Miami. All the Avianca connections, we assume, are gonna go through Miami. We're not gonna dig into each one of these. In most cases, that's what we're assuming. These one stops, right? You can bring this up and say, ah, it's going from, now in this case, it's not going through Miami, right? So they're going directly from Los Angeles to San Salvador, El Salvador, and then on to Managua. So that makes this a, a shorter flight. If you're coming from the West Coast, you may like this a lot uh, because it, it is more, direct. If you have to go to Miami, you got to fly all the way across the U.S. and then back quite significantly. So that's uh, not necessarily the way you want to go. Um, there's some that go through Guatemala City and then through uh, San Salvador. But that's $2 different, not uh, not too different in price. So let's see what this other one. Yep, they're all doing the same thing. So if you're coming from the West Coast, that's how they're handling it. Let's go see if we can let's try another major airport that I like to use, Dallas-Fort Worth. And we're going to go to Managua as well and see what they're doing. Uh, they're still looking at, look at the 18th. I think that's what we were picking. And let's go look. All right, now here we go, $120, right? So this is a very good price. Where's our one stop? San Salvador. So. And if you look, we got uh, we got some higher prices. Three fifty eight on the twentieth. Glad we didn't look then. One thirty four the day before, but we got several days at one twenty. One at one ninety eight. So we get some variation here, but with a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of hunting around, we can get some really good uh, flight options as well. If you're coming all the way from Dallas, that's a really good price. And 
and El Salvador is one of my favorite airports, right? That and Ataturk, my two favorite to, to stop at. They just have great food, great service, lots to do. If you're going to be stuck in an airport, that's where I want to be. And of course, if you're stuck, stuck, and you need to like leave the airport and hang out, then Guatemala City and San Salvador are fantastic because you can get out of the airport and you've got really good cities right there that you can go explore and do things uh, relatively easily. Guatemala City especially, I love because I can walk out and walk to things I want to do. Um, so I do like having long layovers in Guate. Uh, at, at La Aurora uh, Airport when possible. So this is Avianca. A lot of people really like Avianca. It's one of the two really good airlines coming here to Nicaragua. So if you're if you're going to be wanting to compare, Avianca is going to be on your short list, right? If you need a third option, I'm going to say if you're coming from the U.S., that is, I'm going to say American is the way to go. Uh, but our my general choice is going to be Avianca or Spirit. Spirit being where I go almost all the time. But I do fly Avianca on a semi-regular basis, partially because I go to different destinations. And so uh, neither one goes everywhere. No one does, right? Now, if you're going to Mexico, you're going to have a lot fewer options, but you may want to look at one of these because uh, they will go to Mexico as well, often bouncing through San Salvador or uh, Miami. Uh, but you could also go direct on Aeromexico. If you're heading to uh, Havana, Cuba, uh, you can go on Conviasa direct. That's going to be a bit more expensive, but there is a direct flight to there. If you want to go to Panama, Copa is your obvious choice. That's the flag carrier for Panama. And uh, if you're going to El Salvador, obviously Avianca makes a lot of sense. Um, if you're going to Costa Rica, there are flights on Sansa. They're pretty limited. They do exist. Uh, and there's there's just not a lot of airlines coming into Managua. So so go, it's really easy when you're dealing with Nicaragua to go directly to the websites for the airlines. You don't have to look at a bunch of different things. You don't have to worry about using a service that, that puts together a whole bunch of different flight options. The country that you're coming from essentially guarantees which airline you're going to be flying unless you're coming from the U.S., in which case you have a few to choose from. Um, I always recommend against using United. They're generally the most expensive. Everyone I know has major problems with them every time they fly. It always ends up a serious problem. And like I said before, my roommate lost his luggage, right? Like, and, and they have no way to get it back. This has been days of dealing with problems with United um, and, and just incredibly frustrating and potentially scary. Luckily, he lives here. Like, it's not a tragic thing that his luggage is gone. But, like... If this is your vacation or something, that could end your vacation. That could just destroy things. So let's jump in and take a look here at Spirit. Let's start with, now they don't fly out of Miami, they fly out of Miami area. So it's FLL is actually where it is, but as a general like airline skill, you wanna say Miami area, right? Don't pick your airport. So many people, I cannot tell you how many people when looking at their flights on Spirit look at Miami, the airport, MIA, instead of Miami area, and then say it's crazy expensive or there's no flights available. And you're like, yeah, because they come out of Fort Lauderdale Airport, not Miami Airport. You're forcing at the wrong airport. So, of course, it's going to be really expensive. They got to fly you to another airport inches away or all over the place to get back to Fort Lauderdale before you can come. Like, it's just not going to. So... That's just a general skill. Don't dictate the airport unless you absolutely need to. Let's go look at, or let's go pick our date. We're going to jump up to something similar. We know that September 18th was a decent number to work with. Let's go see what we get out of Fort Lauderdale. This is direct. And yes, they give you a warning. They're not supposed to need this. We've talked about that other places. Now, they're not showing this far ahead right now. That's uh, surprising. Something's wrong. There we go. There we go. Okay, so if we get back to where they're showing, this may be that they're not booked that far out yet. You can't always do that. So we're looking at, now these are the super savers, uh, but we're looking at $49 in August. So this is just one month away. Well, one month and a week or so. Let's take a look. Standard price, 54 Savers Club, 49 If you're like me and you have their uh, credit card, then I get the Savers Club, right? So I'm on the $49, but it only saves me $5. But that's 10%. That's not bad, right? Um, so... These are the only prices that they offer. Uh, this is the new afternoon flight. Notice it's arriving at 1.13 in the afternoon. A lot of people have complained about Spirit coming in in the middle of the night. They've switched that to the middle of the day um, based on those complaints, I would assume. Uh, same thing here, 10% savings on the Savers Club, 67 uh, or $61. So let's also go take a look and see what's going to happen if we do the same thing but are coming in from the same. Let's do DFW. Dallas Fort Worth did that. It did select it. it. Seems to be struggling there, and we want that one way. Likes to change things on us. Okay. 
back to the 18th. So we're comparing apples and apples. And let's go now. I saved our last search. Okay, Dallas Fort Worth, Managua on September 18th. And we understand. And again, there aren't any. We're going to have to go back to August. Supports my theory that they're not pricing them that far in advance. And here in the same time period, this is the cheapest, is the 64, and a little bit higher at 88. And then there's a few that are a little bit higher. We're looking at some pretty good prices, though. 64 is the, again, Savers Club. So for normal people who are just flying on Spirit once or twice, $70. Now, Spirit tends to have really lean baggage allowances. So if you have baggage, compare this price. Uh, Avianca was only a few dollars more, like maybe $30 more. So you may be able to fly cheaper on Avianca. If you have a frequent flyer with one or the other, that probably is going to make the difference for you. If you just like one or the other, that will probably make the difference for you. Uh, but if you're just flying, you're just coming down for the weekend, you got a backpack, Spirit's going to clearly be cheaper. Um, and I have had the best experience uh, overall. I've been flying Spirit for nine years. Um, I fly them specifically to Nicaragua a lot. I discovered them from Nicaragua, and I have had zero problems with Spirit. Now, I have had some people uh, report the return ticket scam on every single airlines that comes into Nicaragua. It is not a requirement of Nicaragua, but there's nothing you can do about the airlines requiring it. It is a requirement for Costa Rica. It sometimes then gets copied to Nicaragua inappropriately. Everyone could do that. So just be prepared that that one thing has happened negatively to other people, not to me, but people have reported it, so just be aware that you always have to be ready with dummy tickets. Check out uh, um, Generic Expats. He has a video on dummy tickets that explains what he does to have, for a couple dollars to have a protection against that or be ready to do that. You should be all set. But these gives you really quickly prices of what it would take to come from different places um, and uh, uh, come to uh, Nicaragua at, at low prices, right? When people are saying that they're, they're struggling trying to find um, cheap flights, that is quite often what's going on is uh, they're just looking through a kayak or some service like that, or they're not checking the different dates to see what's available, or they're, um, you know, I don't know exactly what's going on. They're, they're going to a different website than the airline websites and getting, you know, just bad information there. It's really pretty easy if you know what to do, if you're used to it, to get good prices. Here we go, Los Angeles. Uh, one day different, $94. Um, now I clicked on it. Oh, it's probably going to have to scroll down. They have multiple flights for the day, and there's the cheap one. Um, now that one does have, uh, looks like looks like a bit of a layover, right? So sometimes that's, that's going to be a punishment. But even these more expensive ones, these aren't bad, right? So very comparable to Avianca, and that's generally what we find. Spirit gives you uh, traditionally a little bit more flexibility that you don't get any luggage allowance. And if you don't have anything, then you win. Um, and if you need to add some, you might pay a little bit extra. But if you have, again, like you're in the super savers, you have the credit card, um, you can end up with a lot of discounts. Avianca, probably some of the same plans, but they uh, start just a little bit higher normally, but not always. And then um, often have a little bit more baggage allowance uh, built in. Right, so just look at what you need to do for travel, compare, and if you're trying to save a few dollars, it probably comes down to which one you like better. Uh, but sometimes one is really expensive and one is really cheap, depending on the date. If you're looking at like the holidays, you wanna come down for Christmas, the prices explode, right? They go way up for several weeks and that's just the way it is. If you wanna travel during the holidays, most places you pay a premium here, definitely true. Lots of people wanna come back to Nicaragua either because it's the holiday for like it's Christmas break and they wanna get away from the snow or it's a time to come see family and they're willing to pay a huge premium to be with family on Christmas. So you have massive price increase on the tickets. But for most of the year, you're looking at prices more or less like this. Um, so if you're having a, pro a problem finding those cheap, affordable flights, go take a look um, directly on these two websites. And if you really want to shop around, also check American Airlines. But generally, they're going to be a, a bit over. I, I've never seen them actually be directly competitive, but not bad, right? You may pay 20 to 50% more, which is not bad at these price ranges. And often they have more included, although these days I'm not sure that's true. Um, and, uh, and I know, right, people all the time flying at these rates. I flew in my last time from New York, $106. I just talked to a whole bunch of people who flew in for $60, right? So these aren't prices that people aren't really getting. This is really what we're paying to fly in and out of the country on a regular basis. So, uh, yeah. Hope that, uh, hope that helps you figure out good ways to find flights, at least from the United States, into Nicaragua. Of course, they're going to be more expensive coming from uh, Panama, Mexico, Havana. They're all premium locations, but they are available. Go directly to the websites. You'll get your best prices that way in nearly all cases.
With that, I hope you guys are now equipped to find at least some reasonable priced flight options from wherever you're coming from to here in Nicaragua. If you're coming from way too far afield and there just are no cheap flights, I apologize. I wish that we could magically create cheap flights to everywhere in the world, but at least those coming from places in the U.S. for sure. And a lot of the region, you're going to have options one way or another to get here as long as you're able to transit through the U.S. But these kind of thoughts and processes, they're good for flights coming from almost anywhere, learning to go and look directly at the flight websites, paying only for what you're going to use and considering different airlines and how you work with them can lead to a lot of great uh, increases in the quality of flights and the cost of those flights that you may receive. Having flown and traveled a lot over the years, uh, being able to get cheaper flights and being able to control our flights and guarantee them better and know that we're going to have access to our luggage and things aren't going to go wrong, it's very important. We don't want disasters to happen and we don't want to pay too much because we're often traveling as a family, often quite far. So knowing how to work with airline websites is very important for us. And as you're considering just traveling to the region or possibly becoming an expat, you may find that using airlines effectively is something that's going to be more and more valuable to you. So I hope that this is useful for you. If you'd like to support the channel and the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.